In this CC3D quick tip, we're going to talk about how to set up very simply a servo to act as a simple pitch gimbal for your FPV camera. Now this is something that I'm doing because it's been asked for specifically by one of my subscribers as part of the thank you for 15,000 subscriber video. So this is for you, you know who you are. Uh, it's part of the CC3D series, so this is a quick tip, but we've already done things like build a 250 quad, put the CC3D board into it, we'd added things like an on-screen display, Bluetooth, GPS, even flash the board with things like Clean Flight. This is the board that we've been using for the second half of the series, and I've now flashed it back from Clean Flight to Open Pilot. Because personally, I'd rather fly this with open pilot. If I want clean flight, I tend to fly that on the Nazi 32. So what we're going to do in this video is very simply configure up the servo so that as I tilt the platform, the camera remains level. Now, it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. There's only a couple of things that we're going to need to change. There's a website here that you can go to for all of the details, which gives you far more information than we're going to cover here. I'm using a super simple method to answer the question from the subscriber, but by seeing what I do here, it should be a lot easier for you to go in and do the more complicated setups where you have a pitch, an aileron servo, or you have a super simple gimbal that you've built yourself. So this demo rig, as you probably spotted, we're not using a craft, it's just easy for me to show it on this. We have our CC3D on the bottom board, we have a big chunky digital servo, just happens to be the one that's in the box. In reality this is probably going to be a little 9 gram servo that's connected to the back of some form of little hinge on to which you have mounted your camera. But all I've done is just popped both of these pieces onto a piece of balsa wood with some cable ties and blue tacked the camera to the output of the servo so that as I move it when we have it configured this should stay level. So things we're going to need to set this up, we're obviously going to need the PC, we're going to need the ground station control software and we're going to need a USB cable to plug this in and configure it. Also handy to have some form of battery eliminator circuit that we can run it with because we don't really want to be running the servo from the USB cable and pulling more power than we need out of the port. Uh, some USB ports are designed for power delivery but with a servo you're not sure how much it's going to pull. So I'd always recommend that when you're doing this and you have the servo plugged in you always plug in an auxiliary 5 volt power supply into one of the output pins too. Right, enough talking. Let's get on to the PC and we'll start the configuration. Okay, so here we are on the netbook. We have the ground station loaded. We don't have the CC3D plugged in right now. We don't have any lights. So let's first of all plug the board in and do the base configuration and then we'll plug in the servo. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the CC3D. Wait for it to boot and connect. There we are and we're going to go into configuration. Now in configuration there are two areas that we're going to need to play with. The first one is going to be output. Uh, this is an unconfigured board as you can see. There's none of the uh, sliders set for any of the motors but all we would do is if you had a configured board we'd just be looking at five and six anyway. So this is tricky to do if you're using any more than four motors. The other thing that we're going to need to play with is obviously to come all the way down here to the gimbal section. Now by default the camera stabilization module isn't turned on. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is turn that on. But before we do that let's just set up the output so that when we plug the servo in we don't overdrive and upset it. Now the two outputs that we can use here for the servo are going to be five and six because I'm assuming that this is on our little quadcopter. So I'm going to put it into six. I'm going to make the low end 1060 and I'm going to make the high end 1980 and I'll make the middle value 1500 which is the center which should have the servo pretty neutral because I've already set the um, servo up so it's right 
Okay, so now we have 1060 being the low end, 1980 being the high end, and 1499 being the middle. So these are the values, the ranges that we have for channel 6. This should be enough to give us a decent range of movement on the servo. If, however, it's not, we can increase the endpoints that 1060 and 1980, but that should be fine for now. We also need to make sure that the update frequency for the outputs on channel 5 and 6 corresponds with the kind of servo that we're using. If we're using an analog servo, then 50 hertz is absolutely where we need it to be. If we're using a digital, then you can push it as far as 330 for a little bit faster response. I'm just going to keep it on 50 for now. That works fine. So I'm going to save this configuration. There we go. So now we know we're working on channel 6. So we'll go back to gimbal. What we're going to do now is we're going to enable camera stabilization. That's the first thing we need to do. And then we're going to save it. And now we have to unplug and replug the board back in in order for this to work. So I'm going to disconnect from the board. I'm going to unplug the CC3D. The reason that we're doing this is because now we have turned on the camera stabilization module, we have to reboot the board in order for that code to be running. What I would do at this point is I'd actually plug the servo into the channel. So we're going to plug the servo into channel six. And I'm also going to boot the board and supply the plus five volts by plugging in the battery eliminator circuit. And then that means that the servo power is being delivered from something else. There we go. Okay. So let's go back into the computer, plug the CC3D back in, and we'll power everything. There we are, we're connected. So we'll go back into camera stabilization. We'll say the pitch servo is on channel six because it's pitch that we want. We'll save that. Here we go. And now we have very rudimentary stabilization, but as you can probably see, it's overcompensating. It's going too fast. Now, what you can do is if you find that it's going the wrong way, so at the moment it's stabilizing the right way, it's just probably moving a little bit too much, we can actually change some of the values. So if it was reversed, what we do is go into output, and we click the reverse icon and click save. And now it actually is reverse. It's going the wrong way. If yours is doing that, dead easy to fix. All you do is you just untick the reverse box in the outputs. And then it's stabilizing the right way again. So back into gimbal. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this number, the output range or angle, because at the moment it's it's too aggressive. It's actually not staying still. It's actually overshooting a little bit. So I'm going to double that to 40 and save it again and try it again. And that is pretty close. It's still not quite enough. I would probably say maybe another five. Okay, let's see if that's any better. That's pretty close. Okay, so now I can disconnect from the CC3D, unplug the USB cable, and here we have a stabilized camera on our craft. So that is as easy as it is. You don't have to do an awful lot. You just have to configure the outputs, the frequency, the range that you want, make sure the servo is moving in the right direction. And then once you've done that, you can actually set this thing up on the right output and you're good. Couple of words of caution. I personally would never fly FPV like this. I wouldn't have it stabilized this well, just because in my experience, having a stabilized camera as your primary FPV camera means that you're unaware of whether your craft is tilted down, tilted backwards, or from side to side if you have a two axis gimbal set up. So 
If you're going to do this on your FPV camera so that you always have a view of the horizon, I would probably tune this down a little bit so that it doesn't give you the full range. The other thing I've mentioned, of course, is that website. Now you've seen how easy it is to do. You can go back to the website and have a look and potentially have a crack at some of the more sophisticated ways of setting up gimbals. But thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and as always, very happy flying.